Hi everyone, welcome to the 2020 Winship Gala. Like many of this this year, we've gone virtual. I'm Ronnell Blackman and I will be your MC for this evening. On behalf of Winship Cancer Institute, we can't thank you enough for your efforts to support cancer research during this challenging time. We have a very special program for you this evening. Shortly, you'll hear an update from Winship's Executive Director, Dr. Wally Curran. We'll celebrate our honorary chairs, Andrea and Mark Kaufman, and we'll hear a truly incredible story from Winship patient, Liz Ames. At this time, I'm proud to introduce to you the chairs of the 2020 Winship Gala, Wendy Conrad Aronson and Kate Douglas. Thank you, Ronnell. We are so grateful to each of you for joining us this evening and for your flexibility as we changed to this virtual event. Together with you, we have raised more than $1.36 million for cancer research. We want to thank our incredible team of volunteers, especially our corporate chairs, Kevin Burns and Martin Tilson. We would also like to recognize our presenting sponsors, the Ma Ren Foundation and Brenda and Mac Neese, as well as our diamond sponsors, Cox Enterprises, the Wilbur and Hilda Glenn Family Foundation, and Work Capital Group. Like many of you, I faced and am surviving a cancer diagnosis. My family and I have always appreciated the importance of Winship's cancer research and exceptional treatment. I would now like to introduce the person currently leading these incredible efforts, Dr. Wally Curran, Executive Director of Winship Cancer Institute. Hi, I'm Wally Curran, and I wanna welcome all of you to the Winship Gala 2020. What an amazing year, but I wanna really sh give a shout out to Wendy Aronson and Kay Douglas for just extraordinary work in leading this Winship Gala. We had so many different plans and arrangements for it, and Wendy and Kay just gave us inspirational leadership to the current virtual version of the Winship 2020 Gala. It's been an extraordinary year for all of us in 2020, and Winship is no exception. In our research, our education, and our care, our faculty and our staff have really exceeded all expectations. We provided care without interruption during the height of the pandemic. We've continued to get actually the largest number of research grants of any year in the last decade. We've also continued to enroll patients on life-saving trials and provided critical education, particularly education related to how to manage cancer during the COVID crisis. It's really been a special year as we've seen many of our leaders really step up in just remarkable ways. And I couldn't be more proud of the team that we have here at Winship. Now, many of you have heard that I'm stepping down as Winship's executive director in January. And I can tell you my 13 years at Emory and my 11 years as Winship's director have just been extraordinary for me, both personally and professionally. And I wanna thank all of you for your tremendous support of Winship I think you also know we have a remarkable leadership team, and I want to introduce two of those great leaders of Winship right now, Dr. Sagar Lonio and Suresh Ramalingam. We're in the middle of a very exciting time of scientific progress. Outcomes for patients with cancer have improved steadily in the past few years. We are proud of the fact that Winship, with your support, has been a major contributor to this progress. We're now well positioned thanks to Wally's leadership, to get to the next higher level. Our goal is to improve the outcomes and lives for every patient with cancer, for every type of cancer, and for every patient in the world. We will achieve this by conducting transformational science. We will achieve this by bringing together the best teams to address complex cancer problems. We will achieve this by training the next generation of researchers. While doing so, we will place the patient in the front and center of our thoughts, words, and actions. And finally, we will achieve this with your support. Thank you for being a supporter of Winship Research. Now, I will turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Sagar Lonia. Thank you very much. And as we know, nothing in 2020 goes as planned. We had the best laid plans for an amazing gala to be set in November of 2020. And of course, 
when we zig, 2020 zagged. So let's think about what we are doing now. This is a virtual gala, and we are so grateful and appreciative for all of your support, for some of you for months, for some of you for years, and for some of you in the audience for decades of support. And through that time, you've seen Winship transform from a small cancer center to a world-influencing global cancer center. And for that, we are incredibly grateful for your support for all the time and for all the things that you've done for us. Now, I wanna spend the next moment really introducing what I think is the next wave in transformational care that Winship is a part of, and that's delivery on the Winship way. We know that the new tower, the Winship Tower at Midtown, is a transformational space for us. And in that transformational space, it's the perfect place for us to model the new model for care delivery. And that is the Winship Way. Okay, how you doing today, Good. sir? How are you? When Robert Logan was diagnosed with stage four cancer of the soft palate, he did his research about where to go for care. I always wanted to go to a place that was cutting edge, that had the the newest and the greatest, and Emory offered that. He also knew Winship is Georgia's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center, giving his team of doctors access to the latest research and clinical trials. Statistic-wise, people that come to one of these centers has a much higher survival rate. Someone that goes to a smaller facility will not get the top-notch care that I will here at Emory. What Robert didn't know was that he's experiencing the Winship Way, our next generation approach to cancer care. The Winship Way stresses the integration of research with clinical care and the coordination of services to make the patient experience seamless and comfortable. You know, the culture of team science and team care has really existed at Winship for decades. What the Winship Way is here for is to expand that, to accelerate that. And uh, we're seeing examples of how that's already happening. And the pill that you're taking is part of the clinical trial. Robert Logan sees it and feels it firsthand at one of the first facilities developed by the Winship Way, Winship's Head and Neck Cancer Clinic at Emory University Hospital Midtown. The nurses all deal with the same doctors, the surgeons, the oncologists. They know who I'm seeing, why I'm seeing them. And if I need to change gears to say, I need to see this person um, for medications, they will go get that person. This coordinated care is made possible by a space specifically designed around the Winship Way. The patient comes to a central clinic space where physicians and specialists from a variety of disciplines work side by side. The best thing about this clinic has been the organic interactions that happen on a daily basis. He has done very well participating in this study. I think that's been really a life-changing process and probably the single best thing that we imagined would happen but didn't necessarily plan for is the single best thing that's come out of this uh, process. The Winship Way also stresses integration of the latest clinical research into patient care which enabled Robert Logan to be treated in a clinical trial that has changed his outcome. Especially with myself, my cancer metastasized and the clinical trial that I'm on is not available anywhere else. It's only available here. The Winship Way is constantly evolving and growing. We're using what we've learned to guide the design of the new Winship at Emory Midtown building currently under construction. When completed, it will be a physical embodiment of how we are integrating the Winship Way into every clinic, every lab, everything we do. So when I think of Winship, I think of global impact. The passion, the excitement, the enthusiasm, the sense of purpose uh, from the Winship Cancer Center members, myself included, uh, is really tremendous, it's palpable. The Winship Way doesn't just provide patients with individualized care. They also have access to the latest technology, such as Emory's Proton Therapy Center. Proton Therapy delivers an extremely powerful and precise dose of radiation that targets cancer cells while avoiding damage to healthy tissues and organs. 
The strength of Winship's research is generating excitement as well. In lung cancer, the National Cancer Institute has recognized Winship with a specialized program of research excellence, or SPORE grant. The lung SPORE puts us in a very elite group. There are only four institutions in the country that have the lung SPORE grant. This five-year research program grant provides approximately $10 million to Winship researchers, which will make a substantial difference in our ability to fight this lethal disease. Looking at the frequency of T cells, they're like... The National Cancer Institute has also recognized Winship for its extensive research in immunotherapy. I think I can imagine a world where either through uh, precision oncology, targeted treatments, and immunologic approaches that we can eliminate or control cancer. I feel better. Energy level is okay. That has always been our goal and propelled by the spirit of excellence embodied by the Winship Way, we have more momentum than ever. I think the Winship Way is really the future of cancer care delivery. And I do believe very much that we're setting the standard of how cancer care should be delivered to patients. We're all so fortunate to have Winship right here in Atlanta. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the 2020 Planning Committee, Host Committee, and Winship Gala past chairs and honorees. You'll also see all the names of our sponsors and patrons at the bottom of your screen. Thanks to all of these individuals and corporate partners, we exceeded our fundraising goal this year. Emory's new president, Greg Fimbus, arrived this August and he's quickly become a part of the Winship community. He has this message for us. Hello, I'm Greg Fimbus, president of Emory University. It's a great honor for me to be part of the reimagined 2020 Winship Gala. Although I wish we were together in person, I want to tell you how inspired I am by your dedication to making a difference for the Winship Cancer Institute, especially in the midst of this unprecedented year. Together, you have raised more than $1.3 million for truly life-changing cancer research here at Emory. This extraordinary level of support offers hope as we look for new ways to prevent, treat, and defeat this disease. I join Wally Kern and the entire Winship team in personally extending my appreciation to the gala co-chairs, Wendy Aronson and Kay Douglas, as well as the honorary co-chairs, Andrea and Mark Kaufman. I deeply appreciate your leadership during these challenging times, along with the tireless efforts of your committee of volunteers. Cancer has not stopped during the pandemic not for our patients and their families, and not for our frontline healthcare providers and cancer research teams. Your work has never been more important. And I want to thank all of you, our volunteers, sponsors, and patrons for your incredible dedication and service. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. It's time now to celebrate our 2020 Winship Gala Honorary Chairs, Andrea and Mark Kaufman, Let's take a look at how the Kaufman family's philanthropy helps bring the Winship Way to fruition. The bell is the best sound we hear every day. It means a patient has come to closure on his or her episode of care. Okay, ready? One, two, three. But the ringing of the bell isn't just a celebration for patients. Everyone involved in their care is part of it. The physicians, caregivers, and staff know that this moment is the result of teamwork. It takes researchers, physicians, therapists, and other caregivers. It also takes community support. If you look at the best centers in the nation, those are the centers with the strongest philanthropic support. Philanthropic support like that given by John Kaufman. After going through cancer surgery at a center out of town, he made it his mission to ensure that the very best care was close to home. He felt like Atlanta deserved a, a state-of-the-art cancer treatment center, and Winship was the bullseye. John Kaufman's support went beyond money. He was the inaugural chair of the Winship Advisory Board, and work tirelessly to promote Winship and involve others in supporting it. 
John Kaufman was an extraordinary leader of advocacy for Winship in the Atlanta community. Uh, John challenged Winship to be the very best it could be and challenged the community to come support Winship. One way he did that was by organizing a yearly golf tournament at the Dunwoody Country Club, an event that has raised over $1.7 million over the last 10 years. And started challenging a lot of his friends at Dunway Country Club that they could raise a lot more than they were doing and challenged them. I think he's a true community man that understands that when you're part of a community, a town, it's important to immerse yourself in that, to help others, to make an impact. The impact of philanthropy like John Kaufman's is critical to Winship and the progress against cancer. The role that philanthropy plays is that it's able to help us do things that we couldn't otherwise do, take us to new heights that we couldn't really even think about. Because of philanthropy, we're able to conduct high-risk research at early phases that can subsequently be rolled out into the clinics and to our patients in the form of new treatment options. The labs at Winship are full of those ideas, and there is great excitement about the ways our patients are benefiting from our discoveries. The ability to go all the way from the laboratories, the basic cellular genetics and, and immunology, all the way to the bedside to the patient is something that's a particular strength of the Winship Cancer Institute. So I'm going to revisit some of those options again today. We are well poised to make major advances to improve the lives of patients all over the world and get us towards a goal of a world without cancer. John Kaufman's legacy lives on in an endowed professorship in pancreatic cancer and through the continued philanthropic support of Mark and Andrea Kaufman. But perhaps John Kaufman's greatest legacy is the example he set and the many others he inspired to get involved. He felt like if you can impact one or two people and they can impact one or two people, over time you, you have a group of people that can really make an impact on what needs to happen. Our hope is that what will happen is a lot more of this. We need your support to make sure that every patient gets to ring the bell. The Winship Way will help us ring that bell. Help us ring this bell. I want to hear the bell. Help, help us ring the bell. Join us. Let's make that bell ring. I want to put out a special toast to Andrea and Mark Kaufman. The Kaufmans have just been remarkable in their commitment to winship and their belief in our ability to cure cancer through our engagement in our research. So please join me in lifting a glass to toast Andrea and Mark. As we celebrate the considerable progress that has been made against cancer, we hope you'll help us ring the bell once again for a truly remarkable story that you'll never forget. I was living the best life that a person could live. I have two small, beautiful children who were three and six, and an amazing husband, Matt. I am an attorney and just was enjoying life. And all that changed on July 2nd, 2019. I was a very healthy person, always very skinny, and I started feeling distended. So I was at a different hospital, and the surgeon didn't really think anything was wrong, but because I was an advocate for myself, which I have learned that you absolutely have to do, um, I demanded a CT scan, and when I went back for my results of the CT scan was when I found out that I had cancer. So the way it's explained to me, this is an appendiceal cancer. Your appendix ruptures, and it covers all of the organs, or a lot of the organs in your abdomen like a coat of paint. And it was going to be a very invasive and scary surgery. They typically remove as many of your non-vital organs as possible. And then they pour a heated chemotherapy into your stomach um, at 105 degrees. 
That's the temperature that cancer cells die at. Human cells die at 110 degrees. And then they pull the chemotherapy out of you and then staple you back up. After that, you're in a state of just disbelief for the next couple days and shock um, as it all kind of sinks in. So we started digging for the expert and we said, we we're going. it doesn't matter where this expert is, we're gonna find him. And every doctor and oncologist we spoke to said, you don't need to travel anywhere. Your expert is in your backyard at Winship. So when I got to Winship, my doctor made us feel so much better. He said, I basically am gonna take you to the brink of death and bring you back. Um, but he also said, He's done more of these surgeries in the Southeast than anyone else, and he's only lost one patient as a result of his surgeries. And he teared up as he was telling this story, and you could tell that that one loss out of all of them impacted him significantly, and then he took this incredibly seriously and, and didn't take any life for granted. And that made all the difference. When we left, we were like, this is going to be a really tough and scary road but we know that we've put your life in the right people's hands. So the day before my surgery was scheduled, I went in for a biopsy and he called that night to tell me that I had a high grade cancer, which is one out of 10 people with this type of cancer have the high grade. And only 1,500 people in the United States have this type of cancer generally. So my analogy is it was like getting hit by a Mack truck for the second time. And then I was certain that I was not long for this world. I mean, it just didn't seem, based on everything I had read, that this was going to end well for me. It was my 39th birthday. On the exact day, I started 12 rounds of chemotherapy. Emory had a clinical trial for a six-hour infusion instead of a two-hour infusion, which I was a part of. And I do believe that that was part of the reason that I had minimal side effects. Today is my anniversary of that surgery, which was completely coincidental that this happened, November 6, 2019. And, gosh, I gave my children and my husband a going away gift, which was a dream catcher, because the history behind a dream catcher is that it's a Native American's mother's gift to their children when they can't be with them. And as optimistic as we remained, as we walked out the door and our heads were held high, there was certainly a fear of when or if I were ever gonna see my children again. It was a 14 hour surgery. My doctor came out and told my husband that the cancer was much more extensive than they had hoped. And they essentially had to move, remove every organ, the non-vital organ that they could remove. But he remained very hopeful, and he was very optimistic that he got all the cancer out. So I was in the hospital for 19 days, and then when I came home, I was obviously off of the IV nutrition, so learning how to eat again was very challenging in and of itself. Getting off the couch was hard enough. The furthest I could walk was to the stop sign and back. It was really eight weeks, it, right at the New Year's, um, was really a turning point where I could function. So I am what they call no evidence of disease, NED. Um, and so I'm living my best life. I am ramping back up at work. Um, I am playing with my kids every single day. I'm teaching preschool one day a week, and I am just soaking up every moment that I can with my family, with my husband, and all my friends. If I had stayed with the original doctor who had diagnosed me, he wanted to move forward with surgery, and there is no telling how extensive that surgery would have been, how much more damage or organs they had to remove. Um, there's no telling whether I would be here today. I just feel that my life is dedicated now to Winship, that they have given me a second chance at life, and so many other people in my position a second chance at life. Thank you, Liz. Wow, what an incredible journey. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Many of you have expressed an interest in continuing your support of the groundbreaking work at Winship. 
In lieu of the fabulous live auction we have planned, we hope you'll consider visiting the link below, making a donation, and we need your help to keep the momentum going. The funds we raise from the gala go directly to support cancer research right here at Winship and to support the many people whose lives have been changed by cancer, like those you've heard this evening. On behalf of Winship and Wendy and Kay, we can't thank you enough for your support, enthusiasm, and generosity. Thank you everyone for being a part of our virtual 2020 Winship Gala. Have a great evening.